Welcome to another video and we're just three days away from the Affliction reveal live stream and the teasers finally started last night. We got some information regarding a quality of life feature that's coming in 3.23 that will allow you to split currency stacks while the trade window is open which is really nice. And during this teaser we can see what appears to be a new unique flask. Now it's possible that this is some kind of flask MTX but I think that's unlikely. So this is probably a new unique flask coming into the game in the Affliction League. And it almost looks like some sort of candle, so just based on the art I give my best guess that this could be a new unique Stib Knight flask. But we'll have to wait and see for that one. The teasers should be flowing all the way into release now, and it's likely we'll get the full patch notes at the end of the content reveal on Thursday. And that brings us to the topic of today's video. What buffs, and perhaps more importantly, what nerfs are we going to see in 3.23? I spent a bit of time thinking about this to come up with the three things that I think are most likely to be buffed in the Affliction League, and also three things I think will be nerfed. And let's start off with the nerfs, because I think it's a lot easier to actually consider what can be nerfed, as we know what's strong right now. It's much harder to look at buffs, as there's plenty of things that probably could do with improvements, but which of these actually makes it in is anyone's guess. At the very top of my predictions for nerfs in 3.23, it's returning projectiles, and I'm looking at you, Jung Ron. Now, this is not necessarily the support gem, but more so the generalized mechanic of returning projectiles. Right now, there's a handful of interactions with the returning projectiles, which are just kind of ridiculous and probably shouldn't be a thing such as the use of a returning projectiles mechanic with Eye of Winter and Arcanist Brand, where a line of text on Arcanist Brand forces all of the projectiles to return, since it prevents them from moving further than a specified distance. Or the abuse with Shrapnel, Ballista and Cypher's Mark, again due to an unlikely line of text on the skill gem itself which allows multiple projectiles from the same attack to hit the same target. Now I do think that GGG will address returning projectiles in some form in 3.23, but I'm not sure exactly how they'll go about it. It would be great if they fix the really broken cases and leave the actual mechanic as is, as there's plenty of genuine use cases that aren't taking advantage of a broken interaction. This one almost beat out returning projectiles to the top of this list. Yes, it's the Pathfinder and more specifically Flask Effect. I think it's highly unlikely that GDG will want to nerf flasks individually, as that will also nerf other classes. But with Pathfinder being so strong ever since the rework, and really even before the rework too, I think they may want to tone down the amount of flask effect which is readily available from stats. I'd expect this will be lots of small changes rather than one big hit. For example, I could see the small nodes on the Pathfinder Ascendancy itself be reduced from 5% flask effect to 3 or 4% each, whilst the huge amount of flask effect for magic utility flasks on the Nature's Boon Ascendancy Notable could be dropped from 30% to 25%. Meanwhile, similar changes may be made to the passive skill tree and gear modifiers, with the overall goal of lowering the total amount of flask effect that one can reasonably obtain. Regardless, I do expect to see some kind of nerf for Pathfinder sometime soon, and I much prefer this kind of approach rather than gutting the ascendancy or massively overhauling flasks again. Lastly, in my predictions for nerfs in 3.23, it is of course Sanctum, which was only added to the core game in the Trial of the Ancestors League. This one really doesn't need much of an explanation, Sanctum is just completely overtuned and it provides far too many divine orbs and mirrors. It's likely that Sanctum will just receive changes to its reward structure, but it's also possible that Sanctum relics are changed to provide less of an advantage. For example, the ones that reveal rooms may be nerfed or just made to be a lot rarer. Either way, I think it's highly unlikely that the current implementation of Sanctum will make it into 3.23 without some changes. And next up is the buff predictions, and as I said before, I feel like the nerfs are far easier to predict because you kind of know what's strong, but there's just so many things that could be buffed or reworked. But of course, I've got to start with melee because I really do feel that melee changes are going to happen sooner or later. They've been a long time coming. Now I could ramble a bunch in this section, but I'm going to keep it short. There's two things that need to be addressed in regards to melee. First and foremost, for the love of God, please fix Ancestor Totems 
Take the more melee damage from Ancestral Warchief and the more attack speed from Ancestral Protector and bake these buffs into melee abilities at a baseline level. Then remove those buffs from the totem abilities and rework those totems to be purely attack based totem abilities. This super simple change will make melee feel so much less clunky to play and so much more enjoyable. And second, why do so many melee skills have giant negative attack speed multipliers built into them? I'm not sure why this is a thing, but it probably should go away, as again, this will go a long long way to improving how melee feels to play. Please GGG, we've waited long enough, surely 3.23 will be the melee patch, right? And next up, it's the good old mana stacking builds and the blood magic keystone. Although these two archetypes are very different, they share the same problem which prevents these types of builds from being very competitive with traditional builds that reserve all of their mana against powerful auras or other reservation skills. Now the problem here really is that the trade-off of, in the case of blood magic, losing all of your mana and only being able to reserve one free aura with eternal blessing, or in the case of mana stacking, not reserving all or most of your mana against auras, is really not worthwhile in terms of what you get versus what you lose out on. Aside from Ancestor League, Blood Magic is really only used in those builds that want to stack tons of life, such as Hexblast Miners or builds using Relic of the Pact. The use case of Blood Magic to gain the ability to spend life on skills is basically a non-factor, and Blood Magic really just needs more. It needs more support, either on the Keystone itself, or support via new gems like Eternal Blessing, or new options on gear or the passive tree. Meanwhile, mana stacking builds are in a similar boat. Again, there are a few strong mana stacking builds, but they're few and far between, and once again they're very specific. The opportunity cost of keeping your mana pool intact versus reserving all of it needs to be looked at. Lastly in the buff predictions is my prediction for two ascendancies that I think will be reworked in 3.23, and that's going to be the Gladiator and the Raider. Now, I've already talked a lot about the Gladiator on this channel, but I really just feel like the class needs to be better on the archetypes that the nodes are focused towards, namely melee bleed, and really anything to do with dual wielding or the use of a shield. Right now, Gladiator is really only good on bleed bow and corrupting fever setups, and it either needs more support for melee, or some kind of more specific changes to those archetypes to help out the Gladiator ascendancy on those types of builds. Meanwhile, for the Raider, the class is just, well, bland. It lacks identity for the most part, and I think it will receive more options on the Ascendancy tree, as right now it's currently the Ascendancy with the least choices for notables, and to add to that, all of the choices are locked behind branches. The Raider could do with a few two-pointer options to flesh out the class a bit more. And that's about it. My predictions for the buffs and nerfs in 3.23 Affliction League were only a few days away from the reveal, and then we'll all be able to start planning our League Start journey, which is exciting. What do you think will be buffed and nerfed in 3.23? Let me know by commenting below. And thanks very much for watching. As always, stay tuned and stay safe.